That was supposed to be me in an elevator, arriving on the scene. Hello, you filthy animals. How is it going? Today, I have a video that I think is gonna be a little bit more laid back and fun. This is a video that pertains directly to my home, my happy place for the past seven years, though not always happy. Sometimes a little cluttered, sometimes a little chaotic, unhinged, dirty, and uh, gross. That is New York City. New York, concrete jungle, wet dream tomato. That New York. I was recently scrolling on the tubies and I saw that uh, Jack Edwards had done a, uh, a video about books based in New York City, books that he bought in New York City that are about New York City. I was like, fair, that's, that's cool, that's very cool. I would like to add to that conversation, you know, why not? I feel like I can. I've only been here seven years, so technically I'm not a full, true New Yorker. 10 years is the deadline for that. Though I've been through a lot of New York stuff, a lot of New York stuff, and I feel like I can properly speak to a contemporary New York experience. There are probably thousands of books written about New York City, and I haven't read all of them. I mean, you wouldn't believe it, but I haven't read all of them, so please, don't take this as the definitive list of New York City books. Take this as a real New Yorker telling you things that seem to kind of speak to what New York City feels like. There's seven books that I have in the room with us today. First, let's talk about kind of the OGs of New York experience. And this one might be a little bit controversial, but I think it's a really great depiction of New York and kind of the frantic, bustling reach for perfection and kind of the combativeness that the city can be. And that's American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis. I used to work in a slightly high-end retail store and the amount of people that would come in that kind of fit this insanely polished finance stereotype was honestly appalling. Everybody kind of looked the same. They all had the same shoes. Everybody looked for common projects. That was what the, 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 sh the off day shoe was for all of these people that worked in this particular hub. This book, it feels like such a stretch. It feels like this really kind of demonic representation. It's a true satire. It's so unbelievable that that's where the believability is. If you don't know what American Psycho is, it's all about this murderer who lives in this upper, upper tier of society in the 1980s, 90s. This competitiveness that lies within this field. And there's so much about that book that is, is real. I mean, you get into these certain circles of Manhattan and it's totally impenetrable. You have to be in a certain sort of coded way to get in. I liked this book a lot. I read this when I was in New York City, so this wasn't a book that I had read when I was trying to kind of get here. I read it when I was in New York City, I read it when I was living in Manhattan, and I read it when I was still working that job that I was constantly encountering these people that fit that stereotype so well. So I think that this book represents New York City really, really well. And I know that this is you know problematic and everybody has issues with it, but it illuminates this circle in a way that you kind of have to see it to believe it, but it's, it's there. It's totally there and it hasn't left and I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. The second book, and uh, I toyed with kind of classics in New York City. I mean, obviously you have The Catcher in the Rye, which is about youth in New York City and kind of walking through these areas. But I think that the best book that shows kind of this older style of New York City is The Great Gatsby. What I love about The Great Gatsby and why I think it represents New York City so well is that it shows this totally untouchable class, this, this, the most elusive of personalities, and it, it ties it into people of a much lower kind of caste and how we're able to intermingle. And that is truly what New York 
feels like. I mean, you you have these untouchables. You have these people who you only fantasize about existing. And then sometimes you end up brushing past them on the street. You end up being weirdly at the same place at the same time. It also elaborates a lot onto the American dream, obviously. I mean, that kind of is like the quintessential American dream book. But this in particular, I mean, New York City is a place that so many people from so many different walks of life, they all migrate to this, this small little island and they all have this dream of making it happen. And I think that that is New York City. I mean, I talk to people from different countries and they all have these wild, ideas about New York City and a lot of the time it does live up to the expectations. When I moved from a small town into New York City, New York City lived up to my expectations and so much more. And I think that The Great Gatsby captures that so well. And it also touches upon a lot of the sadness and the emptiness that happens with this city that's bustling and moving so fast next to you. And you kind of feel like you're standing alone in this traffic. I think it's a great book and I think that it represents New York City so, so well. I don't care. Sue me, sue me. Let's touch upon some of the more contemporary fiction that I think shapes New York City so well. There's a ton of contemporary books that talk about New York City. I haven't read them all, but these are two books that I think really encompassed the feel of New York in kind of a, a, one of them is in like a jovial lighthearted way and one of them is kind of like a struggling sort of way. Of course you do have kind of runner ups, like you have a little life that I think touches upon New York really, really well, but I think that that's more of a look into friendship. I just finished Taipei by Tao Lin, which I think describes Brooklyn really, really well. What else did I want to talk about? What else, what other like runners up did I have? I don't remember. Whatever. Let's talk about the two books that made the final cut. First one that I'll talk about, and this is like a new release within the past three years, and that is Luster by Raven Leilani. This wasn't a favorite, favorite book of mine, but I did enjoy reading this book because I think it touches on very current artist in New York City. I think she works in like a publishing house. She gets laid off from her job and she's struggling to make ends meet. She ends up getting in kind of this taboo relationship with this married man. And it, it looks into how the younger generation is sort of navigating the messiness of New York City. It has a lot of like iconic New York moments. Like she talks about Comic-Con at the end, which I've only been to Comic-Con in LA. Don't ask me how I got there. All right, I'll tell you. I snuck in with somebody else's badge. <laughs> no, actually it was given to me and I had to pretend that I was a totally different person. Anyway, so this book feels very modern. It feels like it can speak to the younger generation. I think she lives in Bushwick and that is exactly like the epicenter of the youth of New York City live. I mean, I have a lot of friends that live in Bushwick and it describes a sort of artsy scene, this kind of new wave of people coming into the city. And I think that describes it really, really well. So again, not a super fave, but I think that it depicts what New York feels like for a younger person. And to kind of piggyback off of that, I have an uh, iconic book, legendary, top tier, and that is Happy Hour by Marlo Granados. I think that this is like a book talk favorite now. Every time I walk into a bookstore, this is always on like book talk picks, the book talkers. And, uh, I can see why, it's girly's book, but this is all just about the fun of New York City and just how everything is so spontaneous and it's all about who you know and it's all about getting into the best parties and it's all about getting in and having the most fun and kind of making these connections that bring you to these places that are so unexpected and so unbelievable and it's just saying yes, 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 yes. Which for my first two to three years of New York City, that's all I did. I. <laughs> I really can't tell you how much fun New York City is. And I think a lot of the time in these books about New York, you really feel this, this craziness. You feel this temperature there that's just so unbearably hot and unbeatable. But then nobody really talks about how much fun you have in New York City. And to me, that's what this book captured so well in a way that I hadn't read in a really long time. There's really no plot. There's really no anything in it besides just these fabulous girls having fun in New York City, and just trying to pay their rent. And that's it. And it feels so on brand to how 
mid 20 somethings are living their life in New York City. You love this book if you've lived in New York and you've lived a certain lifestyle of just like rapid, 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 go, 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 go. I remember I would come out of work and I would just have one bag that I would take with me and just go for a week and then just kind of empty it out and see the remnants of what that whole week had had. Oh yeah, it was a lot of fun. I love this book and I highly suggest it to anyone that just wants to feel how this frantic energy can be positive and fun. So, work. So after that, oh, positively fantastic choices. I chose three nonfiction books that I think kind of were perfect for me to read. The first one is obviously, well, not obviously, because you don't know. The first one is a book that is so devastating. It's about something that happened in New York City that I think we all know, um, but I think it's incredibly important for any New Yorker to read. And that is the only plane in the sky, and that is about the attacks on 9-11. And what's interesting about this book, I've talked about it on the channel before, but it's all chronologically written from so many different perspectives. There's so many different timestamps, and it's all of these very unique vantage sort of points that all of these different people came together and told in this very linear narrative and it's so interesting. I think I read this in like a day and I just breeze through this and it really just shines a light onto this catastrophic moment in New York City history and in the United States history but shows you just how uniform New Yorkers can be in kind of adapting and evolving past something that is so devastating. Hi Oleg, I'm filming right now. There's our other favorite New York transplant. I'm talking about New York City books right now. What do you think is like a, an important thing for every New Yorker to see? In the city? In the city. Hard to say. What is like a, the most New York thing you've experienced? It's a really hard, it's, a, it's like a question, I don't know. Depends what are you talking about? I would say Oleg's favorite New York City thing is the ferry. What is that? The ferry. Oh, I was about to say that. Were you gonna say that? I was about to say that. Which is interesting because in the book, The Only Plane in the Sky, it showed how the ferries were utilized to kind of shuttle people out of lower Manhattan, which is where the Twin Towers were. I mean, it's crazy to me. Every couple of months, I just look at the New York City skyline and I imagine where the Twin Towers used to be. I try to put myself in that position of watching it all unfold. And it's, it's, really unbelievable. And I have older friends who lived in New York at the time and they tell me stories about it and just how bonded everybody became under the same umbrella of distress and how they all picked up the pieces. And I think that it's a fantastic rendition of telling that story. And I love this book. I highly, highly, highly suggest if you are curious. And the second two books are books that kind of were really, really important to me when I was making my decision of moving into New York City. The first book is Chelsea Girls by Eileen Miles. Miles is a poet who was living in New York City in the 1970s. This is much more of their understanding of life and kind of building this platform to grow and thrive in New York City and their, much more of their past. This book was really moving to me and it kind of showed that grittiness of New York City that I wanted living in the village and all of these up and coming artists. And I think there's so many different books about that sort of lifestyle and time in New York history, but I think that this one does it really, really well. And I like Miles as a writer and I think that they represent a part of New York City that a lot of people love to kind of investigate. And then I would say the most most instrumental book to persuade me to move to New York City, the book that just absolutely pushed me over the edge. I was teetering and this book pushed me. Just Kids by Patti Smith. I recently talked about this book in a video. I think that this book was integral to so many young people's lives. I think for me, what defines New York for a lot of people is that you are able to adopt a second family. In New York, you are able to reinvent yourself. Nobody knows you and really nobody cares. But in this carelessness and in this life that you think is, is 
may be temporary. You find this permanence in these people that you meet along the way. And I think that that is what Just Kids does so well. Oh, it's going to make me cry. <laughs> the people that I've met in New York City are are my second family. Wow. That <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Oleg. I mean, Oleg I met in New York City. I would have never met Oleg if I didn't move to the city. And uh, I think that that's what this book... Oh my God. <laughs> represents and does so well. So there you go. No real New Yorker would tear up. That's devastating. How dare I? But anyway, these are the books that I think define New York City really, really well. And again, this is a fun video. And I was thinking of what kind of prompt I wanted to ask at the end of the video. Like I feel like I've naturally starting to do. You can leave your favorite New York City book because obviously there's thousands that I haven't even touched upon and so many different stories that I haven't explored. But I would like to know A, where you're from and B, a book that you think defines that area really, really well. And I would be so interested to see what those books may be. So anyway, you're wonderful. You're fabulous. Thank you so much for being here. I'm walking here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Uh. Oh, I also, I feel like this shirt looked like a New York City newspaper. That's why I wore it. Uh. <laughs> right? Oh, like, do you want, did you find your New York City moment? Do you want to say it on the camera? Come on, Ole. Come on, Ole. Same jeans every day.